Lab. Hey, do you guys remember that Premier 110 amplifier that I rebuilt from the ground up? Well, it's back to the original circuit. We did a demo on the amp. It kind of sounded like we were playing out of a box of premium saltine crackers. There's just no response. Unfortunately, the amp, in my opinion, is not usable. Maybe a collector would like it the way it is, but I'd rather have it functional as well as cool looking. So I'm gonna modify the amp. We're gonna change the preamp tube to 6SL7 like I previously talked about in my past videos. So I'll show you the old schematic and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We'll cut to the chassis and get to work. Now here's the chassis. You can see this is a push-pull 6V6 amp. It has a 6SL7 inverter and then the preamp tube is the 6SC7. Nice tube, but not much gain and very unusable with a guitar. I assumed if you had a microphone input or an accordion or some crazy thing, it'd be fine. But in this case, that tube doesn't get it. So take a look at the schematic. Okay, here is the original schematic, the way this amp is configured currently. All right, now I'm gonna go over to the new schematic and we're gonna change the preamp tube to the 6SL7, utilizing the same socket as the SC7. We're just gonna have to rearrange some components. Well, here we are, underside. The 6SC7 sits right here. So you got your input jacks, coupling caps, and there's the plate resistors. The filament circuit is on the same pins. So the 6SL7 will drop right in at that point, but the rest of this will have to be rearranged. Here is a beautiful Sylvania 6SL7, new old stock that I had. That will be our new preamp tube. So yeah, I'm sure I'll have collectors and the purists out there crying foul. But I'll tell you what, guys, if you bought one of these amps and you tried to run it with a guitar, you'd probably just turn around and sell it because it's lousy on that input. So what I'm gonna do is keep the microphone input and the instrument inputs, and we're gonna pan across. So you can still run a mic with this thing, but it'll also have enough gain to run your guitar. Bottom of the socket is stripped, and it's ready to reconfigure for the 6SL7. Good thing about this mod is, is it's easily reversible if you wanna put it back to stock. The octal tube socket, which used to support the 6SC7 as the preamp, has now been reconfigured for the 6SL7, which just required rearrangement of some components. I actually added a couple caps, and of course had to reroute signals because the microphone input now has become a panning control. So over here, you have the mic, which goes through a .02 microfarad cap, and over here, you have the instruments. The mic control now will pan between these, seeing them as two inputs. And then the volume control now becomes the main volume for the amp. So let's take a look over here at the schematic. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Here is the 6SL7. You can see I added some caps here off of the cathodes, which the 6SC7 did not have. Also updated the plate resistors. They were the 270K now we had to reduce that to a 47K to get proper gain through the 6SL7. So I'm gonna to cut to the old schematic and then we'll go over here to the new schematic and you'll see the changes. I believe this is gonna really be a slick update for the Premier 110. All right, so let's quickly look at the old preamp circuit versus the new preamp circuit, okay? I also made other changes to the overall schematic and I will post a final JPEG image of that and I will also show you a red line diagram of the improvements that I made. Following this, we will have a live demonstration of how the amp used to sound versus what it sounds like now. All right, so here is the original 6SC7 preamp schematic, okay? So you see your inputs came in to pins four and three as individual inputs. 
then you had a microphone volume and an instrument volume. So it was actually amplifying each of those triode sections individually, okay? And take a look at your plate resistors. They're running that thing at 270K resistors, right? So they're really trying to get some gain out of that 6SC7. And the other thing is, you look at the cathodes, they go direct to ground. Now, let's swing over to the SL7, and you can see a big difference, okay? Number one, I took the mic volume from over here, and I moved it over here. So it is actually a panning pot now from the mic input or the instrument input, or you can kind of mix the two. And now if you follow the preamp signal, it comes into pin one, exits pin two, goes through your volume control. You see your tone control up there, which is just a high cut. But then the volume control goes back into pin four, and it's reamplified, and then goes over to the inverter. This is more like how Fender does their inputs to give you more gain, right? So we achieved approximately double the gain from this circuit versus the old SC7 circuit. All right, so as promised, I'm gonna post the old schematic and let you review that. And that was the original way that I believe this amp was wired. At least that's how it came in here. So I recapped the amp, hoping for the best, but I was pretty disappointed with its performance. All right, now I'm gonna go over to the new schematic, which I'm calling the Premier 110 Mod Amp because of the preamp modification with the 6SL7, all right? So the main things that happened here was taking the mic control and turning that into a panning pot, using the instrument volume as our main volume. I took the tone control, which used to go to pin one of the inverter tube and moved that to the high side of the volume pot. Plate resistors were updated to the 6SL7 preamp and the inverter tube. So the inverter tube also had those 270K resistors and I bumped those down to 100Ks. I wanted to reduce that gain. This thing was a gainiac, okay? So here's the red line diagram, all right? So if you follow the red line diagram, taking the old original schematic, it shows you pretty much step by step of what you have to do to modify your Premier Amp to get the same performance, right? If you want copies of these schematics, just email me, I have them as JPEGs only. I'd be glad to send you a copy. All right, now let's take a listen to what this amp used to sound like versus how it performs now. I think you'll be extremely happy. All right, now we're playing the Premier that I just rebuilt. Now this is stock, okay? And I've told you guys, it doesn't really have the gain, but it appears to have a good tone. It's got so, a great tone. So here we go. It's, uh, very low gain, though. It's like the, this is the anti-Marshall. <laughs> it's, it stays clean no matter how you put it all the way up, it stays clean. Yeah. with the Premier Amp again. Uh, when we first voiced this amp, we decided it really had way too low of gain for guitar playing. And uh, Terry has changed the preamp tube to a 6L... SL. SL7. Yep. And a little magic on the wiring and definitely fixed it up. It's got a really pretty cool sound now. It's got two distinct sounds you can pan between the microphone input and the instrument input, and uh, I kind of like the microphone input. I think Terry does too. Anyway, here's what it sounds like. Thank 
So let me give you a quick visual of how the controls work. Tone is pretty obvious, but now, as I said, the microphone input has been turned into a panning input, okay? So right now I'm on the mic input jack, which has the .02 coupling cap. So you take your mic pot and aim it towards mic jack. Instruments now is the volume, okay? So that turns up and down your volume. Now if you wanted to go into the instrument input, that is a resistive input like you'd see on Fender. So you pan your mic control that away towards the instrument input, and now it uses those three instrument jacks. So if you had two inputs, you could actually kind of pan the mic from one input to the other. It also changes your preamp gain. So between those two inputs, you should be able to come up with some unique sounds. All right, a few things to point out. The original 10 inch speaker that was in this amp was shot, okay? So I replaced it with a beautiful Jensen special design ceramic magnet type. And it sounds pretty darn good. I also have the original back cover and the hardware so the amp still pretty much stock. I did have to put on a new leather handle. The other one was dry rotted, okay? But I'm sure the real question is, what are you going to do with it now, Terry? Well, yeah, I'm going to sell it. I repair and build amps for you guys. I don't play. I'm just an electronics guy. So it's either going to end up on Reverb.com here within the next couple days, or if you want it, send me an email and beat me to the punch. We'll see you.